big, beautiful world, and welcome again to another episode of the IELTS series, where we talk about tips, tricks, and advice for IELTS, but not only that, we actually do the full IELTS exam. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. At the back of the camera, we still have Sina. Hello. Thank you for always being here. <laughs> and I remain Sarah. Mm -hmm. Sam is to my right. He has his own YouTube channel called Fast Track ESL. Check it out if you get a free moment. And now we are going to start the IELTS exam. Anything to add, Sam? No, I think um, but at this point, everyone mm -hmm. knows what this is going to be like. We're going to start mm -hmm. and we'll be uh, role playing an entire uh, IELTS speaking test. Yes. And Sarah, who was a former IELTS, uh, who is a former IELTS mm -hmm. uh, examiner, mm -hmm. will be answering the questions. And native speaker. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Hey, you gotta add that to your resume. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right, you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, let's Action! Go. Yes. So, in this first part, I'd like to ask you a few questions about yourself. Okay. Let's talk about emails. What type of email do you normally receive at work or at school? Hmm. Um, I actually only have one email address, so all of the emails come to that inbox. Uh, I do get a lot of spam, actually, which can be very annoying and irritating. Um, in terms of professional emails, just maybe some uh, correspondence between myself and students or future managers if I'm looking to change my job. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you normally contact your friends? I usually use Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Uh, sad to say, we don't usually do phone calls anymore. So those are the two ways I contact them. Why don't you make phone calls anymore? Uh, phone calls tend to be a little more work, a few more steps, and I, I hate to say tedious, but compared to just sending a quick message, then yeah, I'd rather just send the message, especially if we're going to meet up in a few hours. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, do you respond immediately when you receive uh, emails? It depends on the email. If it's work-related, yes, I definitely do respond immediately. Uh, if it's a friend, I would... If it's a friend, I usually have a longer message to write. So if I'm busy at the moment, I save it until later when I have free time. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you feel when you receive uh, spam mail or ads in your inbox? <clears throat> I'm very frustrated, a little um, apathetic because no matter when you try, if you try to get rid of your spam in your inbox, there's bound to be uh, junk mail in another folder too. So I've kind of given up on the whole process. But yes, frustrated would be the word to use. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, in this <clears throat> second part, I'm going to give you a card. Okay. On this cue card, there are some questions. I want you to think about these questions for one minute. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to talk about it for two minutes. Okay. I want you to describe a hotel that you've been to. So here's the cue card. Okay. And here's a pad for you to take notes. All right. So I have one minute. Um, I'm just going to talk out loud to describe my process. Uh, it says, please describe a hotel you've been to. I'm going to say the one that pops into my mind is one from Japan. So I already answered the first point. Japan is where it is in Kyoto, to be more specific. What it looks like, I'm going to say it had a traditional and clean appearance. I might use the word feng shui, but then again, I might not. Maybe zen, that's a nice word. What facilities are offered there? <clears throat> um, actually, the only thing I know about was uh, free meals, and I think there was a sauna. And I'm trying not to write full sentences because that's not good for IELTS tests. Watch the previous episode, or one of the episodes to find out. Whether it's nice or not, very. You know what that means. That's it. That's one minute. minute. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so I'm going to describe a wonderful and peaceful hotel experience 
that I've enjoyed in Japan. In fact, I was more specifically in Kyoto, which is known for its very traditional, simple architecture.、Uh, most of their architecture is based on their principles of life, I would say, which I can't recall at the moment, but it's just simplicity, peace, minimalism is a very big word. In、uh, describing Japanese architecture,、uh, it looked, as I said before, very simple, very natural. Most of the hotel was made of wood, and they have tatami mats there, which can be very. Actually, I had my best sleep on a tatami mat, and they had like a bean pillow also, so that added to my restful experience.、Um, in terms of facilities offered there, Mm, just、uh, there was a public washroom that we could all use, and compared to Western culture, that's a little unique because we don't we don't have shared washrooms. But it was a part of the authentic Japanese experience, which I enjoyed a lot.、Uh, they had free meals, so well, I don't know if it's free. I mean, we paid in general for the hotel, but free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there was also a sauna, which、uh, my friend and I didn't end up using, but I knew that was available for us to use should we want it.、Um, do I think if the do I think the hotel is nice or not? It was very nice. In fact, it might be the most unique and relaxing experience I've had. Now, I've been to a lot of hotels in my time as I like to travel. And even in my own city, it's a bit、uh, luxurious to do this. But I might get a hotel room just to get some space and think to myself and enjoy a nice atmosphere. Perfect. That's two minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So you talked about a hotel in Japan.、Mm-hmm. Now, in this next part, I'd like to ask you a few more general questions. Okay.、Uh, what are some factors? In choosing a hotel,、uh, for me, some factors in choosing a hotel would be cleanliness. That is number one for sure.、Uh, two, location is also very important because while staying at a hotel, you want to be close to the attractions and the amenities,、uh, like hot spots around the area.、Uh, so cleanliness, location, also appearance. If it looks like a nice modern hotel, like when I was in Japan, yes, I wanted the traditional old style because that's what Japan is known for. But hotels in general, I like a newer, cleaner, polished look. Okay. Now, would you say working at a hotel is a favorable career choice? For my personality, it would be a favorable career choice. I I do go between. Careers. I like to experiment, but I would say a hotel job is not for everybody. So I'd probably work at front desk because I like meeting different types of people. I can talk about travel, and even aesthetically, it's a nice place to work in. You know, you're not in a like a dingy office with like questionable air conditioning. You know, so it's easy on the eyes. Interesting. So I would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Wonderful. Now, what are the differences between working in a small hotel and a big one? Well, as someone who has never had experience working in a small versus a big hotel, I can imagine that working for a bigger hotel might have more perks, more incentives for working there. Like maybe you have a better discount or a discount at all.、Um, Multiple guests that you know can stay for a discounted price as well.、Uh, the amenities are probably better, like a bigger pool, a bigger gym,、uh, a sauna, like a, its own spa. Whereas if you're working for a small hotel, they probably might not have those things, and it might be less clean or less polished.、Mm, that's true.、Mm-hmm. Now, do you think hotel alternatives will outnumber traditional hotels in the future? Um. Yes.、Uh, hotels have their advantages, but、uh, right in these days we have cheaper alternatives, but more advantages. So you can actually stay. Oh, stay. <laughs> you can actually stay at an Airbnb,、uh, someone's home, and 
obviously you have like a kitchen, you have a full bathroom, you have your uh, flexibility to clean your own place, right? You don't have someone coming in to clean for you, which can be disruptive, right? So I think in the future, hotels may not be as popular as they once were. Because even today, they're not, in my opinion. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. This is the end thank of you. the IELTS speaking test. And wow. scene. All right. All right. Finished. Now, are you feeling more comfortable as we do more tests? Yes. You know, practice does make excellent. I believe. <laughs> Very true. It's a saying I've really adopted these mm -hmm. past few days. Right. Yeah, like the more you practice something, you become comfortable with it. So students out there, I really strongly encourage you to just keep practicing, right? Absolutely. Go through all the topics and feel comfortable in your own skin and maybe have a friend of yours do the That's same a thing. Great idea. Yeah, do the same thing we're doing. Set the timer so you don't feel so nervous on mm -hmm. the actual day. Mm -hmm. That's right. Simulate the real exam conditions. Yep. Right. So that you feel what it's like mm -hmm. having a full interview, part one, part two, and part three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely going to be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have some comments to share with you. You ready for this? <laughs> Hit me. All right, let's do this. So in part one, um, wonderful answers. Uh, the only thing I have to say is sometimes, and I and I can't stress this enough, uh, you need to um, not just give an answer, but also say why. So, for example, in one of the questions, I asked mm. Sarah about how she uh, emails her friends or whether she calls them. Yes. So she said that... Um, she doesn't really call people that often, mm -hmm. but didn't really say why. Then again, she came back and mentioned it in, a, in another uh, part of her response. So yeah. don't forget to make sure that you're giving uh, complete answers. Yeah. Always have this question in the back of your head, mm -hmm. why? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what you got to keep asking okay. yourself. Part one, why? Right. Mm -hmm. Part two. Now, um, I noticed that on your... Uh, uh, on that sheet of paper you had, yes. you were writing down answers to the things you were going to say. You even wrote down a few words. Mm -hmm. One of my recommendations for students is to write down questions and not just the answers. Oh. Because what many students do on the day of the test is that they're stressed a little and they they run through all of the things that they've written down and mm -hmm. now they're facing a situation where they have another minute Yep. And they're all out of ideas. Mm -hmm. So my advice is write additional questions. Wow. When was uh, yeah. when did you stay at this mm -hmm. hotel? How long did you stay at this Who hotel? Who was I Why? with? Why? Who were you with? Why awesome. were we there? Right. Okay. Now, Holy cow! That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. So what's great about this is you can adjust how much you want to speak for each of these questions. So if you think mm -hmm. you have a lot of time left on your hands, you can yeah. explain that one question a little bit more to help you reach um, the two minutes. If I may, may I yes, interject? Please. Okay, so uh, we've been going through a few of these um, IELTS test episodes and I would say, in my opinion, two is probably the hardest or it might feel a little strained on your part because maybe, you know, the fact is we're both here so you might want to have a conversation so it's a little unnatural that they're just sitting there mm -hmm. and staring at you right so the part two might seem a little too extended but right. my advice asking questions or writing it down so that you have more to say mm -hmm. is good yeah those two minutes could feel like eternity it really, exactly. <laughs> actually it's in like one of them yeah in one of these episodes i did feel like i was being pushed to mm. extend there so if i'm naturally not able to extend then it could feel like a real like difficult pickle very true yeah. very mm. true um another comment about the use of foreign words so you mentioned feng shui you mentioned yes. zen mm -hmm. now for the average language learner i wouldn't recommend using uh foreign words because mm. if the examiner isn't familiar with that foreign word they might think that you are compensating for your uh lack of vocab so there is this oh. word that you don't know and then you're using a word from your own language mm -hmm. to fill the gap. So right. I normally don't recommend it, especially guys, if I it's I think a, Sam is just using the words feng shui or zen as, right. examples, as examples. As right? examples, yes. definitely. Actually, yes. could, I, 
-hmm. Can I give mm -hmm. a rebuttal? Sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed, yeah, but as sure. a native speaker mm -hmm. and as a speaking examiner, mm -hmm. uh, say, for example, the candidate I'm testing is Brazilian mm -hmm. right? or say uh, French. If they use the word feng shui and zen, it's borrowing from the Japanese language, True. which those True. have been concepts introduced into the English language. Right. So they might be showing off their ability to use mm -hmm. foreign Absolutely. words right. in uh, an English context. Absolutely. As long yeah. as it's enunciated clearly, because yeah. in my experience, sometimes the students don't really know how that word right. is pronounced. Mm -hmm. when it, so when that it's can in, kill it. Yes, when it's yeah. borrowed in English. Mm -hmm. So they, they pronounce it in a way where the examiner is like, okay, I don't know mm -hmm. what this person just well, said. Let's say you were talking about food and you mentioned, let's say you were a Korean and yeah. you would mention bulgogi, for instance. Right. Yeah. In, your yeah. own, in your own yes. accent and mm -hmm. the way so, you would yeah. say it. So, yeah, yeah it's, uh, again, it's not a, it's not a mistake. It's yeah. just, if you want to play it safe, it's yeah. a bit then strange. you would try to avoid Yeah, you have to be a hundred percent, you know the pronunciation Excellent. and the definition of that word. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And also make sure that it's commonly used in English. Yes. Like feng shui. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Exactly. Excellent. Another uh, piece of advice is with regards to gestures. Now, you might have noticed that I don't normally um, have a lot of gestures or I don't give a lot of uh, feedback, mm -hmm. uh, verbal, not verbally, of course, mm -hmm. but um, I, I don't use gestures when, uh, as an examiner, I'm listening to Sarah speak. Now, this mm -hmm. is something that um, learners need to know that mm -hmm. the examiner is specifically told especially in part two, not to provide a lot of uh, feedback. Okay. And so if that happens, some mm -hmm. examiners do, but if yep. that happens, that doesn't mean that you're not doing a good job. Yeah. For sure. Just keep mm -hmm. going. Just mm -hmm. be confident. That's and right. yeah. sorry to cut you off, Sam, but that's all the time we have for this episode. Again, check the descriptions box below for any of the words that you may have seen here. And uh, there's a pronunciation key and a definition for you. All right. See you in another episode. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome.